Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how I go about installing a new wireless programmable room thermostat or just a wireless thermostat into a traditional system where you have a hot water tank with a cylinder stat, you have a programmer, you have a mid position valve and a pump and a boiler and various other controls. I'll also show you one of my favorite wiring centers, which I like to use. And I'll show you what all those wires are when they are connected in. And then finally, at the end of the video, I'll show you a wiring diagram, which I've been using ever since I became a heating engineer. Now on this particular job, I'm wiring in a Honeywell T3R, but I could easily be wiring in a different room thermostat because the wiring is virtually the same on most of these wireless controllers. I've also included the Drayton and the Hive receiver boxes just to give you a better idea of how these receiver boxes wire up. So if you are thinking about using a different programmer, then this video will help you with that. Now here comes a disclaimer, do not attempt to do this unless you know exactly what you're doing. These wiring centers can be extremely complicated and I've been left many times at scratching my head trying to work out what wires are doing what. And if you get it wrong, there's a good chance you're gonna damage something else on the system. So always call a professional. So if you do decide to do this and when you turn your power back on, your fuse goes pop, I'm afraid that's all down to you. And just to add to that, I do know heating engineers and electricians who do not like messing around with these wiring centers and these new wireless controls. Now, if you are thinking about doing this yourself, then I've made several videos about the Honeywell T3R and the Honeywell T4R. And there's a comparison video if you're not sure which programmer you might want to use. And of course, you should watch my video, which is all about the wiring, because it's really important that you get the wiring correct, because if you get these wires wrong, you might end up blowing the PCB on your boiler, and that can cause you well over 200 pounds and you're also going to need an engineer to fit it so be really careful if you're thinking about doing this if you're not sure then call a gas registered engineer if you are looking to purchase one of these programmers then i have left links in the description below taking you to all the programmers i have mentioned along with links to all my videos my name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find my video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And of course that will help others to find this video. And of course, if you enjoy my video, you can click subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video, or in the cards above. So this customer called me and asked me if I could do anything with this room thermostat. Now you can see that from this picture here, it is tucked away in the corner and he's getting older and he's finding it hard to reach it and he can't see what it's saying. So he can't really set his temperatures properly. And I've suggested fitting a wireless room thermostat and he liked that idea. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now here I am up in the air and cupboard. We've got a hot water cylinder. We've got a mid position valve. We've got a cylinder thermostat. There's also the programmer, which we can't quite see. And of course the boiler, the pump and the room thermostat, which are all wired into the wiring center. Before I do any work, I will isolate the power to the system. If it's got a switch like this, I am not gonna just switch the switch off. I will always unplug it because that's the only way I can ensure that the system is isolated. Now, if it has a switch fuse spur like this, I will turn the switch off and I will remove the fuse. Now these wiring centers, as you can see, are a whole mass of cables and wires. And just because a wire is colored as an earth wire, I always take it that it may be used as a live wire and indeed any other color of wire. And even if I have a wiring diagram, sometimes they're not wired up correctly. So I will always follow the wiring through to ensure that the new programmer is wired in correctly and it's gonna work correctly. Now my first job will be to work out what all the wires are going into wiring center. Now here's the programmer just above the wiring center behind all the towels. And here's a back plate with the programmer removed. Now I'm interested in this wire here and this red wire turns the central heating on and off. To find out which is my central heating wire, I turn the programmer over and there's a wiring diagram on the back. So this is the live wire coming in. It goes into the two switches and it also goes through the clock and comes out on the neutral. So here is the off position and here is the on position. So we have hot water on and we have central heating on. 
and those are on terminals 3 and 4. Then over here we have the off position, central heating off and hot water off. So if I follow that live wire in, it comes across through the switch and out on number four. So I know that four is then the switch live for the central heating. If I then look at the back plate, I've got a live, I've got a neutral, and then I've got terminals one, two, three, and four. But not every programmer will use the same terminals. Now I'm gonna follow that wire back to the wiring center so I know exactly which one it is. So there are three wires coming to the top of wiring center and this wire here is the switch wire. And if we follow that wire down, we can see the red wire and it comes across and I know that that red wire will go into the room thermostat. See, there's the red wire just behind all these other wires. And there it is coming to this wire here. And this one here is then going down to the room thermostat, which is downstairs in the front room. So I'm going to remove the room thermostat, but before I undo all the wires, I'm going to ensure that the wires go to the places where I expect them to go and make a note of their positions. Now I've already established that this wire here coming in is the mains power. So this is the live neutral and earth, which is supplying power to the system. Here's our brown wire and it goes across these two red wires. One of those is the to the programmer, which is that wire there going up. And the other red live wire I suspect will be supplying the boiler with a permanent live. Now here's the receiver's wiring back box. Now I've already wired it up because it's much easier to wire it up on the bench here before I fit it in a cupboard and it's squashed in the corner. Now it's all wired up, I'll screw it back to the wall. So just to go over the connections, I've got a live, neutral and earth. That's the permanent live, permanent, neutral and earth. And then we've got the switch wires on the other side there, which is A and B. Now all the different makes of wireless receiver, they all wire up in a very similar way. And if you look in the description below, you'll find that video, three ways to wire up a wireless receiver. And here's a little clip from that video, just showing you an alternative way of wiring in the switch wire. Now I wanted to let you know that most wireless receiver boxes, they all wire up pretty much the same. Now this is a very common Drayton wireless receiver unit. Now when we look at the back box wiring center, we have the live coming in. We've got the neutral going out, and we've got the earth wire down there, and then we've got four additional connections here. But out of those four, we only need to use two of them. And to find out which two we need to use, we just need to look on the back of the receiver box. Now we can see on this receiver box, we have a live and we have a neutral. So that gives a unit power. And then we've got a one, which is the common coming in. And then we've got three, which is the switch wire. So one and three are the connections we're gonna be using. So that would then be our switch live coming in on one and our switch live going out on three. Whilst I'm talking about back boxes, I thought I'd just show you this quick clip I took of myself installing a Hive wireless programmable room thermostat. So you can see I've used two three core flexes on this occasion. And you can see that the live and neutral is on the left hand side. Terminals one and three would then be the switch wires. So you can see this uh, wires are pretty much the same as the other unit. You've got your live neutral on earth, then you've got live to the switch and then a switch live going out. Now when it comes to placement of the receiver box, I'm going to put it over here in this corner. It's then going to be 300 millimeters away from any pipework, which is what the recommended uh, position is. And I've got to drill some holes into this wall here. I've got to watch out because there is a cable in the wall running down here. So I always look above to make sure that there's nothing in here. And obviously when I move these towels away and sheets, you can see there's some switches there. So when I drill those holes, I've got to make sure that I miss those because I don't want to go drilling through those wires. Now, because I was working in such a tight space, I was unable to film myself connecting all the wires. I've now removed the room thermostat and I've connected the new receiver unit. Now here's the live neutral on earth coming in and I've connected the brown permanent live to the receiver unit to the brown permanent live coming in. And that's this wire here, the brown wire. So the receiver box will always have permanent power to it. I've then connected the neutral wire, that's the blue one. And if we follow that across, we have the blue here and that is neutral going to the receiver box. And I've then also connected the earth and there's an earth wire there. So the flex is protected. Now there are a couple of different ways I could now wire in the switch wire. Now this really depends on whether I'm wiring in a wireless programmable room thermostat or just a wireless thermostat. 
Now normally with a programmable room thermostat I would wire in the switch wire into the permanent live. So that would mean the grey wire would also be wired into the permanent live. But the customer asked me if he could keep the clock usable also. So that's not my choice but that's what he wanted. Now we can follow that red wire down so that's a switch wire from the programmer and then you can see it goes across and goes into the grey wire and that grey wire will then go down to the uh, receiver unit and then it's coming back on the black and you can see the black wire comes across and it goes into the white wire which then goes into the motorized valve which the wiring for that is just here. So this is now wired up as if it was a wireless room thermostat. Like I said, not my choice, but that's what he wanted. It would still work exactly the same. You just have to make sure that the programmer is switched to constant. Now all that's left to do is to remove this wire here because we no longer need this. This is the old wire to the old room thermostat. And then to clamp the wire into the wiring center to make sure it's secure. And I'm going to clamp that up here. When I do this, I'll make sure that I clamp the white on the outside of the wires and not the wires themselves. I quite often see wires being clamped and that is not the thing to do. The white sheathing should always be the part which is clamped. I've now finished the installation of the receiver box. And if you follow that wire around, there is the receiver box and it's on the wall and now it's all ready to go. So now I just need to power it up and make sure it's working correctly. So I've now turned the power on and you can see the program is now on. I'm going to change the central heating to on so it's on constantly. And you can see that I've also left the hot water in the time position. So there we are, that's in timed and the central heating is in on and constant. Now I'm going to go over to the receiver box. I'm going to get test that the receiver box is working correctly. Now the green flashing light on the top of the box, that means that the receiver box is looking for a signal to come from the wireless programmer. As soon as I put the batteries into the thermostat, the thermostat will send a signal and link up to the receiver unit. And the flashing light will then turn to a solid green. So the heat is not running now, but when I press this button on the front here, the light should turn green and then I should hear the central heating come on. Now I'm going to look at the motorized valve because I know the motorized valve was shut just now. I'm going to check that the little lever on the side has gone loose. So I know the valve is, is opening up and then I should hear the pump start running. And there we go, the valve has opened up and the pump is now running. So that's the heating working okay. Now I need to power up the programmable room thermostat by putting in the batteries. And once I've done that, it should send a signal to the receiver box linking the two together. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole programming of this unit because I've made a very detailed video all about doing that. And obviously you can find that in the description below. But you can see it's fairly straightforward. You just follow the menu through, and pressing the buttons plus or minus and a tick as you go. So now you can see I'm just setting the date. And I can see that is now the ninth. So I need to change the two to a nine. So I'm going to press the plus to a nine. There we go. And then I'll press the tick. And then it takes me to the hours. And then I'm going to set the time where it's now 1028. So I'm going to change that to a 10 like that. And then I'll press tick again. And then I'm going to change the minutes to 28 and then press tick again and then it saves those settings and there we go now the program is all ready to be used now i'm just going to test that the unit is working properly so i'm going to press the off button there and that will turn the unit off then i'm going to go and check at the receiver now the light on the top is solid green the light underneath is off now when i go back to the programmer i press that button again to turn it back on and then i change the temperature I'm going to put that up to say 22 okay and that will then bring the heating on there you go it says 22 so i go back to the receiver to see that the bottom light has turned solid green which is just done so that means it's all working correctly so now all i need to do is to put the cover on the battery case and put the thermostat on its stand so I wanted to show you this wiring center. This is a Drayton wiring center. And it's one which I like to use uh, all the time. And I see it a, a lot in people's properties. Um, and this is a really nice center. And uh, 
everything's laid out and there's lots of connections and you can follow all the wires through so you know which um, components are wired into what. On the lid here, when you turn it over, you can see you have some instructions showing you where everything is connected. Now these wire centers can be used for any type of system. So don't take it that the instructions in here telling you what's wired into what is the way it actually is. So uh, on the top here, there are some connections here and it shows you this is for a, a twin zone pack. So you've got two port valves uh, on, on the top here. And on the bottom here, we've got a mid position valve and they call it their ACL lifestyle bioflow pack. But basically this is a mid position valve setup. And then you can follow these connections through and make sure that everything is wired in the way it should be. So if I start from the side here and work on my way across and just show you what's in here. Uh, as it shows you there, you've got a cylinder stack there and that's connected onto uh, 14, 15 and 16. And you can see those connections are there, 14, 15 and 16. So that's uh, uh, going off to your cylinder stack. We then got the pump, we got the boiler. Now those are exactly the same um, uh, connections because they're actually linked on the top. So when you follow these links across, you can see that those are just all linked together. So you can see those, those links in, the, in there. Put your heating on, both those become live. So we got pump live and you can see that comes down and that's obviously the pump wire there. And then we got the, the programmer wire here. And then we've got the boiler wire here, this little skinny one that comes down. And obviously, like I said, that's an undersized wire. And uh, they've also put additional wire in here because they obviously use five core flex and they wanted to use the earth. So they put an additional wire uh, into the programmer. So this would have been live neutral earth coming into the wiring center. It comes across and the live goes in the top there. And there's a link which takes it up to here. So that's why we've got a spare terminal on the top here. And then you would have the uh, live here coming down and that goes into the programmer. And on a lot of boilers now, you'd also have a live going into the boiler. So they also use this connection for your permanent live to your wireless controls. And then we've got the connections here, which is 10, 9 and 8. And 10, 9 and 8, see that 10, 9 and 8, those are all the heating controls. So that one would be hot water on. Then we've got heating on, and we've got hot water off. So the one in the middle, grey, number nine, that would be heating on. From the live, it go into the programmer, back out of the programmer, up on the grey, into this connection here. It then comes across on the top here, and it drops down into this connection here, which is the room thermostat. And then that would go down to the thermostat, and it come back out on the th of the thermostat, back up here on this yellow wire where it then comes across on the top and it goes into the white wire here on the, on the motorized valve. And then we've got the, uh, the, the motorized valve here. And as it shows you there, you've got the gray, you've got the orange and the white. So the white is heating on in this uh, instance. So the Honeywell valves and the Drayton valves, their wires are the same colors and they do the same thing. But other valves, their colors are different. So you do need to check what the instructions are for the valve and make sure that you know exactly which it is because if you wire them up to these colors, it may not work. And it may break your valve or break something else on your system. Okay. This sensor is very good for fault diagnosing because I can just disconnect a, a particular wire. I'm not having to pull a whole bunch of them out to uh, uh, disconnect one uh, item. So that's one of the reasons, reasons I like this. And then we got our, our neutral block here and we got our earth block. And then we got, like I say, the live coming in there. Now I'm going to show you how to wire in your wireless thermostat or your programmable wireless thermostat. So just remember, this is the wiring layer as if you're using a programmer like this so you still have your hot water in use and the central heating side of it here that would no longer be in, in use so although it's all saying everything is going on in it it actually won't be doing anything uh, but the hot water side of it, all the timings that would still work exactly the same now of course you can get wireless programmers which would then make this unit completely redundant but that's not what i'm talking about here so we're just going to leave this uh, programmer in place so we're just going to replace the central heating side of the programmer with the new programmable wireless thermostat now I've already taken out the old thermostat and I've fitted the new five core flex in for the wireless receiver unit. So here's the new five core flex and we've got an earth wire here which goes into the earth terminal block there. Then we've got a neutral wire here coming into the and goes into the neutral terminal block. 
and then we've got the brown which is permanent live now i've just taken that up and i popped it in the top here because that's a live connection here because it comes down that's the live terminal block there it comes across and that's the link there and if we look inside the lid here again you can see they've this is a live terminal here and that top one's not doing anything so we can just connect straight onto that one it does mean you've got this wire coming up over the top. It doesn't matter. It's just because it's all, it's all going to be inside the box. And in some ways, it just makes it a little bit easier to follow. Now, also, you can see I've put the gray wire. So that's the switch wire also into that live top uh, position here. So those two wires there are now live. So we've got the permanent live to the, to the unit on the brown. And then we've also got the gray, which is in the switch live. Now, you can wire this differently inside the receiver box. So you can do it like this. I'll just show you that picture there. But I've just worried it in this because I'm using five core flex and sometimes it just makes it a lot easier when you, you're doing fault diagnosis if you've got these uh, additional wires in there. And so it then comes down on the gray, it goes into the switch on the receiving unit and it comes back again on the black here. So you follow the black around and then it goes into this terminal here uh, and then it comes across on the link on the top here and comes back down and goes into the white wire or mid position valve, which will then turn the central heating on. Now, if you weren't going to use a programmable wireless thermostat, but you're going to use a wireless thermostat, so it's got no timing options on it, then you would just wire it in a slightly different in the, you then wouldn't put the gray in, in the, into the live here. So we're just going to pull that one out because I didn't connect it fully. And then I would put this gray wire into the terminal number three here. Okay, so that one would go in, into there. Okay, and then that would work off the timer. So the timer is then coming on on central heating on. If I look at the little picture again, we've got central heating on on number nine. So from the programmer, it comes up on the gray into number nine. It goes across on the link on the top there. Let me just show you that link. So from nine, it comes across on a link, goes down here into the gray, again, down through the switch on the receiver unit and then back on the black to then turn the central heating on. That's the way you'd wire it in if you just had a wireless thermostat, not a programmable thermostat. Now you could still wire it in that way. Or the only difference being is you would then just have to set the uh, central heating timer to constant. So you just put that on, so that's in constant. And then if you did want to turn it off from, from here, you just turn it off from there. So that's the two ways you, you could wire it up. And obviously in the um, bit beforehand, that's the way I wired it up. So I wired it in so that the um, this timer can always turn off the room thermostat. Again, I, I don't know why well, well, you'd want to do that. I mean, the customer asked to do that, but you know, that's, that's his, his option. So this is the way you would do it if it's just a wireless thermostat. Okay, and like I said, just to change it again, if it was a programmable one, I take that wire and I put it into the permanent live over here, or whether it's down there, you know, it, it doesn't make a difference. Obviously, and if you're not understanding any of this, why I can move this wire around, then you shouldn't be doing this at all, okay? So, just remember that. Okay, and that's, that's pretty much it. And finally, I just want to show you this little wiring center here, and that is also wired into another wiring center on the top here. When you look inside that wiring center there, and you're expecting the wires to be in certain positions, they're not all gonna be there because some of them are wired in down here. So you can't always take it, like I said, that the wiring centers are gonna be wired in as you would expect. And finally, I'll just show you that actual wiring diagram. Uh, and I've used these plans uh, for years and years. When I did my, my training, I had some diagrams like this and I just made them up so it's nice and easy to follow so you know exactly what's what. Because when you're beginning out on your plumbing, you, you, these, these wires can be extremely complicated and really hard to follow. So I've made these two diagrams. This one here is just showing you on a, on a Y plan. And we have our, our connections here uh, for our, our mid position valve and you've got the colors in, in here also you've got the gray white and orange you're telling us what those those do there and then on this side i've got everything uh, included so i've got all the all the earth wires all the neutral wires and any other uh, switch wires in there so i can see exactly the way something should be wired in okay and i'm going to make these available on my website later this year um so um so yeah so that should uh, help you out if you need to know about the wiring it's nice and simple now this is another one which i've done here also uh, and this one here is now includes the uh the wireless programmable thermostat and you can see that the wiring connections are in there and like i say so if we were 
foreign is wearing through we have our live coming in it comes down here just goes onto that terminal block there comes into our programmer as per usual and then it comes down and then we have our switches down down here which would uh, switch your heating on and off terminal three and four is the heating and three being heating on uh, with this switch here we've got the wire comes across and it goes into terminal block and now it's been disconnected there's there's no other wire coming out on the other side there so that switch there is doing nothing now for the heating and then uh, and then down here we have the wireless programmable thermostat and again for follow wiring back we then got a permanent live coming up goes and connects it into here which is obviously also in the programmer and we also got a permanent live going into the boiler um, just there and then we got a neutral and we got our earth and then we've got switch wires and you can see this is just a permanent live coming across from permanent live to the switch on permanent live and then we've got a white wire coming off which then goes back up and into the um, mid position valve so like i say i will make this available later on on my website and you'll be able to download it and uh, keep it for yourself and follow your wiring diagrams through now if this looks really complicated that's because it is okay and so if you can't follow this, this through then do not even attempt to do it call a gas registered engineer someone who does this all the time and even they may struggle doing this because i said like i said it can be very complicated and words don't always do what you think they're gonna do right that's about it then so i do hope my video has been helpful to you if you want to watch my next video then you can click on the link just here and if you found my video helpful in any way then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and like i said that will help others to find your video and if you enjoyed the video then you can click on subscribe and if you want to receive a notification the next time i upload a help video then click on that bell and of course share the video with your friends and if you want to buy me a cup of coffee i'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund it's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you bye for now and i'll see you next time